In this episode, we're setting up a brand new level, starting with a UE5 ocean water body and island. Let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And I know this episode is kind of a change relative to the stuff we've been working on. And maybe you noticed this in the AI episodes, but the performance of the first level that we made in this series, it's been getting worse and worse over time. And if you remember back in episode six of this series, the whole purpose of that initial level was as a construct. It was a prototype level where we could build and test things. And so now it's on to the next level because with this episode, I think this level that we're designing now is going to serve as eventually where we're testing our alpha gameplay for our game. And creating this new ocean level and island, it solves the performance problem, but it also solves the problem of the fact that we have a gameplay ability that allows our character to jump 30 feet in the air. So inevitably, we need some sort of barrier that prevents them from jumping out of the level. Now, I could create like a giant cliff face all around the level, but that doesn't really seem natural. The ocean's going to do just fine, because in future episodes, once we get past death and respawning mechanics, I think I'm going to do an episode where we have a tentacle kind of coming up out of the water, grabbing our player if he lands in the water, pulling them down into the depths and that will be a death obviously so swimming for this gameplay prototype at least that we're initially making is going to be a no-go but back to the purpose of this episode by the end of this episode you're going to know how to create an ocean water body and customize that to your specifications including adding foam changing the color changing the size of the waves stuff like that so here are the key concepts for this episode if you're not following this series then the first two-thirds of the episode that revolves around the water body ocean is all you need the final third will be setting up the island with its own material some skull sculpting, stuff like that. So let's get to it. All right, all right, all right. So we are going to start today by creating a brand new level under file, new level. And we're going to use a basic template here, create. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because we need to go into landscape mode. And the first thing we need to do is give this new level a landscape. Make sure you've got enable edit layers here checked. And under material, I'm just going to use a starter content material, at least for now. But by the end of the episode, we're going to have our own material. And I'm going to show you how I built that. So I'm going to choose M ground grass here. And the section size, I'm going to set this to be 127 by 127 quads. I'm going to keep everything else here exactly the same and create. So now we've got our lovely landscape. I'm going to go back to selection mode just for a minute because I'm going to delete out our floor. We won't need that anymore. And so I'll go right back to landscape mode. And next, we need to make sure we have the water plugin turned on. So for that, I'm going to go under settings, under plugins, and just search for water here. Just make sure you have water experimental checked here. If not, check it and restart Unreal Engine. And then actually, we didn't need to go back into landscape mode. We're going to do some landscape sculpting at the end of this episode. But for now, I'm going to go back to selection and we are just going to search for water body ocean water body ocean and already we've got trouble because well nothing's showing up for our landscape and that's because our location here is all out of whack so I'm going to adjust this to zero instead of negative 36,000 whatever it was and then for whatever reason it's moved all the way out there so I'm going to move it into the middle of our landscape next let's do two really quick prep steps that aren't related to the ocean but are just related to creating a new level so the first thing is I'm going to drag in a post process volume so post process volume right in the middle of the level and if I go up to the top and then under scale for that, I'm gonna make that 600 by 600 by 100. So basically encompassing the entire level. And the next thing I'm gonna do is add a player start. So we'll come up here and search for player start and drag that into the level as well. And I'm just gonna put that right by the coast. So let's go ahead and save this level. And I'm gonna save it under third person and under maps. And we're just gonna call it the island version one, save. So now let's talk about the settings that are relevant for our water body ocean. So I'll go ahead and select that. And the first thing is let's expand under advanced here. And underneath wave, the wave attenuation water depth, that's the first setting to mess with. So the higher this number is, the smaller our waves are gonna be. So if I make this something like 10,000, it's gonna be a very steady ocean. Yeah, just very gentle. But if I make this something like 1,000 giant waves, but I found a number of around 5,000 for an ocean. Yeah, it was just kind of a nice tropical ocean feel. So next, expand the water height map settings here, and specifically the fall off settings. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit just so you could see this. In the Z offset here, it's basically how much the beach is staggered relative to the rest of the land. And so what I mean by that is if you set this to 100, you're not gonna have this lip anymore. So I set it to 100, it's completely flat. If I set it to zero, then it's gonna have the maximum lip. 
So basically that 32 makes the beach slightly above the water level, slightly above the ocean level, but not at the full height of the rest of the island. And I'm gonna set this a little bit higher. I'm gonna set it to 50. Now the edge offset, this is basically how deep, how far back your beach goes. So to this lip, right now it's about a thousand. So if I reduce this, let's set it to 200 then that's going to reduce the depth of your beach quite a bit. But there's another setting that affects that. So if you go under your curve settings here, so the channel is this area under the water here, basically how far that ramp goes. And this channel edge offset is basically the same thing as the beach, but in the other direction. So if I reduce this down to like negative 100, it's gonna be a much shallower beach. But for my purposes, I'm gonna keep it exactly the same at negative 1000. The channel depth, this controls how deep the landscape is gonna go underneath the water. So as it currently stands, it's about 20 meters. So all this goes down about 20 meters. But if you wanted something that was crazy steep, so I could set this to something like 20,000 and then boom, that's just gonna go down into the depths. Let's put it back to 2000, I think that's fine. And then the curve ramp width is exactly what it sounds like. That's basically how wide this whole curve is. And obviously that can't go past the size of your landscape, but you can make that very shallow. So let's say it's 200. So then what that's basically going to do is you have a very steep drop and it goes right down to the bottom of the landscape and the bottom of the landscape is still 2000 units. So I can make that landscape, let's say 200. So that would be a wide shallow area directly next to your beach. And that could work really well for something like snorkeling, scuba diving, coral reef type stuff if you wanna paint that kind of scene. So I'm gonna keep these pretty much exactly the same. This is gonna be 8,000 channel depth. Let's make that 2,000. So next let's get into some interesting settings. So also under the water height map settings, if you go under effects here, and specifically I'm gonna expand the curl noise. And I recommend zooming out a bit for this so you can see the entirety of the island because what these are going to do is give some randomization to the edges of your island. So back in episode 16, when we did water for rivers and lakes, I showed you how to adjust the spline points. But for an island in this case, instead of messing with the splines, you can get a lot of interesting effects effects just messing with the curl amounts. So I'm going to set this first one to be about 0.3 and that just varies up the edges here to give it more of a random pancake effect. And then the curl 2 amount I'm going to set to 0.5. And think of the curl one amount as your primary variation and the curl two amount as your secondary variation. And you can get some pretty crazy effects by cranking up these curl amounts. So if I set the curl one to like 10, just a wild archipelago there, curl two to 20. Yeah, you get the idea. But like I said, we're going to keep this nice and simple, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. I think it's going to work just fine as a nice, strangely shaped pancake. In the curl 1 tiling and the curl 2 tiling here, I don't recommend changing those, but those basically determine how sensitive each of these settings are. Like at what scale is it causing the variation? Some other settings that I recommend playing around with here, so displacement is kind of interesting. If you want to get like an arena type feel, like a bowl inside the ocean, so displacement height, let's do 10. Yeah, so we could have that arena inside. I can make that like 100. We're not gonna need to do that here. The other one that you could play with here that's kind of cool is the terracing. So if you expand that, so the terrace alpha determines how much of a terracing effect, like a step effect there is with the water. So if I crank that up to one, yeah, basically you've got steps all the way down. If I was making like an Incan underwater lost world or something like that, yeah, you could totally do that. Change the smoothness a little bit. So if I wanna put in some erosion, and I should mention, you can also fundamentally change the shape of the island by adjusting the spline points here. I'm not gonna spend any time on that here because we did a lot with spline points back in episode 16. You could check that out. But now let's talk about adjustments to the water material itself. So for the water material, there were three specific areas that I found useful to adjust. And the first is in the water color itself, and that's very easy to change. So if you come down here under the water body ocean, you've got to come down, 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 all the way to water material, and then we can go into that, the water material ocean. And in order to change the color here, it's just this absorption right here. So we go ahead and select that, click here, and let me just move the details panel over here on the right-hand side, and that way we could see this in action while we change it. Make the details panel here a little bit larger. All right, so let's say you wanted a blood ocean. I don't know why, but maybe you wanted a blood ocean. So we can change it to immediately be that dark red color. But you'll notice that the distance color out here, that doesn't change. So let me show you how to change that. So for that, we have to go into a different material. So not this water material, it's actually the material on our water zone. And whenever we use a water body in the world, we always have a water zone. And for the water zone, what you gotta do is gonna come down to far distance here, expand this, and we need to go into the water far distance material, water far mesh. I'll make this larger as well, and then if I come down to the same exact setting, so it's under absorption here, click here, and then you also need to make the far distance material a red color. And then we have our blood ocean well into the distance, but I do not want to do that, so I'm going to cancel here. And to get the same exact color back in our regular ocean, what I'm going to do is click on here and drag and drop this over to drag and drop there. Okay, and then we can go back to our water material ocean, click there, and then click right up here, and that's going to make it the same exact color. 
Now, you might have just noticed, and earlier in the video, I actually had a split second where you saw the water foam, because as it currently stands in 5.1, as I'm recording this video, the water foam is not yet officially supported. But there were some lingering comments and mentions in the material, and I thought to myself, ah, if I play with this, maybe I can get the foam working. And sure enough, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good, and I wanted to show you how to get that working if you wanted to. So we can close out of the water far mesh. We won't need that anymore. And if you come down in your water material ocean all the way to the bottom, you probably can't see it because of my head, but you just click on your parent here. And the parent is still a child material. It's the water material instant child material. And we got to come all the way down again, down to the water material here. Click that. Now I'm going to expand this. All right, so the foam is driven off of a material function. If we come down here to this beach foam over here, and I'm going to zoom out for a moment because what I found is that right here, this node right here that says disabling due to landscape global distance field issues. This node was not hooked up and instead this multiply was hooked up to each of these height lerps. So what I needed to do is I needed to disconnect this multiply node here take this right here and hook it up to both of these nodes, the transition phase here and the transition phase here. Now, I'm not necessarily recommending this because Unreal Engine specifically disabled this because they said it's not working properly with distance fields. I don't really know what that means and it worked well enough for my purposes, so I'm gonna play with it. And the one other thing that I needed to do in this material function is I needed to hook up the output foam scattering from here into this multiply node here. But everything else in the water material and the beach foam function, I left exactly as is as I'm recording this on 5.1. So now over to our water material ocean. And once again, I'm gonna bring this over to the side of my screen and we're gonna go over all the beach foam settings that I found to be useful. So we can scroll up here and just make sure you've got enable ocean foam checked here. And then you get these global scalar parameter value fields that we can play with. So the first thing let's do is I'm gonna set all the settings that I'm gonna use in this particular level. And then I'm gonna talk about what each one controls. So the first one is the depth for distance field foam. I'm gonna set this to be much lower at two. And you see the foam goes all the way up to the edge then. The next one I'm gonna set is the foam distance. Instead of 256, I'm gonna change this to be much further, 1250. Goes out quite a ways. Now, if I get really close to this, it doesn't look particularly good, right? It doesn't look realistic. And so what I found works well is the foam depth minimum. I set this to be much higher, so about 1000. And that's gonna make the foam kind of fade out and then it becomes much stronger right where you would expect it to be strong, like right where the waves are breaking into the island. The next setting I found to be useful is this foam scatter bias. So if you set this higher, it's going to put the foam out way into the distance. And if you set this lower, it's going to diminish the foam. So if I set this to like 0.1, yeah, almost nothing. So if you set this to something like 0.8, yeah, it's going to go way out. And it basically looks the same everywhere, so it doesn't look very good. So I'm going to change it to something like 0.2. And the foam scattering MIP, this is also a cool setting. So if this is set to something much lower, it becomes far more detailed foam. To me, it felt like the resolution of the foam went way up when I set it to lower. So if I set this to 16, it's just kind of a general cloudy foam. This is really up to you, whatever you want to set here. I'm going to set it to about four. Last but not least, this height bias is a very interesting setting. So if you set this to something positive, then foam covers the entire ocean. And I can think of some useful cases to using this. Like let's say we have an airship that's surfing along clouds. We could totally set up a cinematic to that effect, but maybe in the due course of time. Okay, back down to, let's make it negative one. So those were all the key foam settings that I found to be useful. But if you find others, please let me know in the comments below. The very last setting in the material that I think is useful to know about is caustics. And we'll select that. In caustics, it's basically the shimmering that you see under the water. I'm sure scientifically there's a better way to describe it. So it's that blue shimmering that you see under the water. So if I zoom out, you can really get a sense of it. Personally, I like it. It gives kind of that fantasy ethereal feel. So we're gonna keep that. And the very last setting I wanna mention, all the settings I was playing with under materials, if you come all the way down under water shading, this anisotropy setting. So depending on how high you set this, the water is gonna be a lighter green or lighter blue versus a darker blue. So as it currently stands, it has kind of a tropical feel, but if you want this to be very dark, kind of like a dark stormy ocean, I could set it to be 0.8 all the way up to 1. But I actually want that tropical feel, so I'm going to set it back down to 0.1. So we are all set for our ocean material stuff. I'm going to save this and we can close out of these. So that's really it for the water body ocean stuff. So for the rest of this episode, we're just going to be setting up our island here to get ready for the rest of this series, subsequent episodes. 
So selecting our landscape here, I have a material that I created ahead of this episode and I'm going to go through it. But what that is, I'm just going to assign it and then we'll go over it. So it's the MMS level landscape material instance. And the way I set up this material, very simple. It just has a Z based blend. So below a certain Z level, it's using a combination of two different beach materials that I got from Quixel Bridge. And then above the Z, then it's using our earth quadrant that we set up all the way back in, I think it was episode eight. So here are the surfaces from Quixel Bridge that we're using for the island. Feel free to download them directly from Quixel Bridge. You can just paste in the code that you see right there and it'll come right up. And I'm using 8K textures, maximum quality. If you followed along in episode seven, the landscape material episode, you already know the techniques that we're gonna use for the remainder of this episode. And also then you already have the third and fourth material that are listed here. So here's what I did to create the parent material that we're using for this island level. So in our content drawer, so under MS presets, so this was back in episode seven, the garden landscape material. All I did is I duplicated that material and I put that duplicated material under MMS level landscape material and I named it M underscore MS island landscape material. And in that duplicated material, I simplified it considerably. So let me show you what we've got here. So instead of doing paintable layers, I got rid of those. And at the end of episode seven, we did a technique where we blended two materials together that eliminated the tiling via noise. And the only difference between episode seven and here is that here we're using a parameter texture object. So if I right click here and I search for texture object parameter, so texture object parameter here, that's what I'm using instead of texture object. And the reason I'm doing that is then it allows us to change these materials in our child material. So what I'm envisioning is that we're going to have multiple standalone levels in the game that we're building. And each of those levels will always have a primary material and a secondary material, but also a primary beach material and then a secondary beach material if they're by an ocean. And so that way, every single level, every single island could have different textures, like a different material, even though it's really the same material because we're just doing that in our child material. So let me just go through all of this. So first I started with this down here. So this is the above the Z threshold. So the Z threshold is at what threshold our beach starts and our land ends. And that is determined over here. So depending on the blend height here, that's where we got to set where our beach ends. And this is just a scalar parameter. And the sharpness is how sharply they blend. But let's go through our setup over here. So these are just constant vectors. And I set this to tile at 200, 200, 200. And this one at 168, 168, 168. I think that's identical to episode seven. Then I replaced each of the texture object with texture object parameters. These are all exactly the same as they were in episode seven. Here's the noise just to confirm. So the scale is 0.005. I multiply that by four. I think that's unnecessary if I just set this to 0.02, but keeping that as is. Saturate node is hooked up to the lerp for each of these. We split the components of the lerp into RGB, and then I add one for the alpha here, make float four. The texture sample here, this could be anything for our ambient occlusion. And this is the same exact function that we set up in episode seven. And the other thing I should mention is this is our primary land texture, secondary land texture, and our primary land normal, secondary land normal. So you wanna change the parameter names for each of these. And then once I did that, I just took that whole thing, duplicated it, and then that's our below Z threshold. And I just changed the parameter names up here to be the primary beach texture, secondary beach texture, primary beach normal, secondary beach normal. All the other setup is exactly the same. And then those just blend into a blend material attributes node here based on this information. And then all this setup up here after the blend material attributes node, this is all coming from episode eight where we did runtime virtual textures, which could blend like a rock into the landscape. But this is all optional. You don't need it unless you want that realism of blending objects with the landscape. So then in order to make a child material, it's very simple. You just right click on it. You say create material instance. And that's how I created this right here. Now, based on the height of the landscape, you do need to change a couple of these settings, the blend height and the sharpness. I set this to 50 so that it blends very sharply. So it goes suddenly from the beach material into the land material. And then the blend height, I had to play with this until I got the right setting because you want that blending to occur exactly when the land material kicks in. And if I get really close there, you see the sharpness, it's a quick blend. And the primary beach material, that's the lighter color here and then the darker is our secondary. So yeah, here's our primary beach normal, primary beach texture, primary land normal and land texture. I didn't change those from the defaults. Secondary beach normal, secondary beach texture. And it's all tied into that parent. So if you got all that, and once you assign that to your landscape, it should be showing up just like this. Now the next problem, if I play, there are no footsteps. So what we gotta do is we gotta assign a physical material to our landscape. So I'll select this and under default physical material here, I'm just gonna select the dirt PM that we set up in episode 19. And then we'll play again. And now we've got footsteps. But one other issue is that the footsteps are exactly the same, regardless of whether we're on the land material or if we're on the beach material. 
So what we need to do is back in episode 19 under our human character BFL blueprint function library. And this is under blueprint function libraries pawn human. In the footstep sound function and the jump land sound function, we set a threshold by which if our character is below that threshold, then they're going to get one set of sounds for the landscape. And if they're above that threshold, then they get a different set of sounds. And I just need to tweak this to match our landscape height. So instead of negative 65 being the threshold, it's going to be set now to 100. And we do the same thing for the jump land sound here. So 100. Compile and save this. And then we'll test again. So now we get the wet dirt sound when we're on sand. If we go up here, then we get the regular dirt sound. And I thought about changing these sounds, but I think this sounds just fine, to be honest. I kind of like having the sand have that slightly squishy sound to it. So for the last part of this episode, we're going to sculpt our island out a little bit. And for this, we're going to keep it really simple. So I'm going to go over to landscape mode and we're going to do everything here just using the noise brush here. We're going to do two quick passes over the island. So for the first one, the brush size is going to be 10,000. In the tool strength, we're making this very, very weak. So 0.005. And for the noise mode, instead of both, set this to add. And that way, it's only going to be additive noise, meaning the island's only going to go up. And by the way, if it starts freezing and you're moving around, set the brush size back to something small and then it'll be just fine. So get in the exact position you want to be in and then set the brush size to some high value like 10,000. And so for this, we're going to stay just in the interior of the island. Don't get too close to the edge. So right about here is fine. And then just move it all over the interior. And so you want some randomization. If you got a little mountain just like that in the interior, totally fine. That's perfect. And then for the second pass over the island, I'm going to set my tool strength to about twice as strong, so 0.01. And instead of add, I'm going to change this to both, add and subtract. And then for this, I'm going to go over the edges and the center. So here I go. And that gives us some nice variation in the beach. So the beach goes inland, and we still have some raised kind of mountainous areas. You want to make sure, though, you don't have any areas that dip below the ocean just like this, because then you could get some buggy effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this to be additive again, and I'm going to set this to be much smaller. Let's do 1,000. And I'll just crank up the tool strength to something like 0.1 instead, so it's a little bit stronger. Just a very slight effect. So once you're pleased with the result, you can go back to selection mode and save this. And I want to show you one last thing, which is how to make a level, a new default level of your overall game. And so for that, we come up under settings and under project settings and go under maps and modes here. And we have the editor startup map and we have the game default map. And I'm just going to set both of these to be our island level. So choose our island version one. Same thing here, island version one. And then go ahead under content drawer, save all. So that wraps up our episode for today. And in our next episode, we're designing our first indoor space. And I've cranked up the brightness here just to get a nice effect. But yeah, we're designing a cave level. And I'll show you how to sculpt that directly into your landscape. So I hope to see you there in the next episode.